I'll just call us to order at 638. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, and I think part of um, getting new board members, something that we all talked about was we felt it has always been kind of very gender heavy in one towards one extreme. And we want, we really want um, the board to be more diverse um, in terms of gender and also um, nationality and ethnicity and all that. You know, and I think that's important also, mm -hmm. right? So that there's representation across the board in terms of the work that we're doing here with the board. Right. And in the different towns also. Geographic as well, yes. Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah, do you want to do a quick round uh, introductions? Um, certainly. Okay, you can start. Right. Um, hi, welcome. I'm Michael Abadi. I'm a board chair, probably year three or four, somewhere in there. I live in Randolph. I'm a teacher, and uh, I've actually had a couple shows on Orca back in the day. Um, And they were they were a lot. They're a lot of work, Pat. I just want to say that to keep a show going sure. regular. There, it's a, it's a, it can be a job, um, but incredibly rewarding. Um, and uh, um, I'm Chad Irvin. I uh, I work in documentary film. I think I've been on uh, a year or two, maybe, <laughs> um, and have uh, recently been um, become acting secretary. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's something else about me. I also uh, have run a nonprofit um, for film and media makers in the state of Vermont. Um, and uh, interested in trying to re rethink ways work that can become more involved in the community outside of just community access programming. That is one of my great issues involved regarding work. Who is next? I guess you know, we, the people who are here also. Yeah, I think it's a full introduction. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm Liza Sendler. Um, I am a photographer and educator. Um, I live in Moortown. Um, I grew up in Vermont and went away for uh, like 15 years or so and uh, worked as a, photog a documentary photographer and then also um, like teaching youth photography programs and um, kind of doing my some of my own work and some of my own projects but also really passionate about kind of putting cameras in the hands of other people in their own communities and allowing them to kind of tell their own stories and document their lives. Um, so I, I worked in uh, in South Africa and Australia doing some of that work and came back here with my family. Um, I learned more about Orca Media. I was aware of it from just growing up and, um, you know, aware of it in some capacity, but learned a lot more about like the current, what's going on and offerings through Christopher. Um, I'll be doing some like assisting and helping with the documentary lab. Um, and I was really excited just about all of the resources that you all have and that you can offer to the community and especially like teaching, media making, and all of the amazing like, equipment and things that you offer. So I was excited to learn more. Thank you so much. Um, Christopher Viersema, I'm one of the co-directors here. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of the community <laughs> outreach person and I, I do a lot of the uh, media arts education stuff and um, collabor collaborations with other entities uh, such as Chad's group and yeah, um, and the summer programs and things like that. Um, yeah. So my name is Carlos Diaz. I, I, I've been involved with work uh, since 2014, I would say. I worked here for a while um, and 
I'm a cinematographer, that's what I was. And I'm, right now I run a film program in, in Barry, Vermont, Tech Center, I run a film program. And that's what I do right now to teach, which I love teaching filmmaking. That's kind of one of the wings, one of the things that I like, I used to do with work a lot was to train other people and give workshops and seminars. Uh, I'm Jessica Robles, I'm a graphic designer. I became aware with uh, ORCA because I'm going to BCFA. I saw the signs and I always wonder what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and then a friend of mine that lives around here, she, she told me, and I was like, wow, I didn't know that. And then same friend <laughs> recommended me this year to, you know, she she explained me more about it. And um, I'm really interested. It's, it's I'm very curious um about how it works and um so I'm about I'm about to graduate this uh July yes. and uh in my well um, my MFA is in graphic design. I don't consider myself a cinematographer, but I've been doing a lot of uh, video editing, especially for my thesis. So um, it, it's, a, it's a subject that I'm really, really interested in. And, um, and also, the um, I've been in Vermont uh, seven, eight years, and um, I still feel like I want to be part of the community. So that's another reason I am curious about this. So I'm Jen On. I'm one of the co-directors. Um, I do the con I was part of I do content management and so I'm more interested in the admin part, so not so much of uh, the equipment and the filming, but um, I'm into systems, so it was a nice way to try to figure out how, if we put in some systems, how we could expand our reach and try to make it a little bit more equitable and accessible to everyone. So I think um, that's what I enjoy doing, and I like looking at numbers and data. So mm -hmm. the web part is also what I do. So. Okay. Yeah, yes. yeah. Want to go next? For me? My turn, my turn. Um, hi, I'm Pat McDonald. Um, I'm interested, as you know, in joining the board. I've been involved with ORCA many years. I've actually done a show, Vote for Vermont, for about seven now. And before that, I was on a regular on Bill Doyle's show, as we all know. And um, But also testified, Rob asked me a couple of times, to testify on behalf of ORCA when there was usually a discussion of funding. Uh, and we'd have a, a meeting, and um, I would I testify in favor of funding worker. Um, and my show, Vote for Vermont, I was doing it by myself uh, for a while. Um, Orca actually um, approached me. I had run uh, for, I was in the legislature for two sessions and in the House and ran for the Senate, and I did some, um, some ads and commercials, and um, they liked what they saw me gabbing on the I do gabbing well, um, gabbing on the uh, video. So they approached me and said, maybe I could do a show um, on a regular basis. So I did. And uh, then I joined with Campaign for Vermont, Ben Kinsley, uh, because we were pretty much covering all the same things with the uh, legislature and uh, issues that were happening around town. And so uh, Ben Kinsley and I were doing the show for quite a while, um, we're still doing it. We took a little hiatus. Um, we have we have actually two shows. You run both of them. One is Vote for Vermont, and the other is called Banter and Beans, where Ben and I just talk back and forth, um, talk about legislation, talk about issues that are happening, and it's just bantering back and forth and drinking coffee. And we're going to start uh, doing a blog very soon. Um, but I I'm very impressed with the staff. I know the staff well, right, Jim? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> uh, we have a fun time, and uh, they're a great staff. Um, I think I'm one of the people that calls the most. I do a little bit of editing. I'm always asking for something to be edited. Um, but you have such an opportunity 
um, all of the public access TV stations have such an opportunity to be involved with the community and, and to let them know what you can offer for them that I'd like to be part of that um, because I think there's so much that can be done um, to to get them doing things so to help with their employees perhaps the education things that they could do um, and you talked about getting out in um, uh, the community I do I hire some photographers from Orca and I, I do a lot of um, like um, oh, capstone agency with Sue Minter. We've just done that. Um, I've done uh, Washington County mental health um, and we just go and, and videotape people where they live and work. I also, um, just so you know, I, I do a talk show uh, for WDEV. That's an actual employment at my age. Um, I do a talk show on Tuesday and Thursday mornings from nine to 11. And uh, that I love a lot. So that's what I've been doing, but I'd love to help in any way I can. Been around a long time, 20 years in state government and 25 years in public and uh, private sector. So you add that up, I'm, um, I'm pushing the, uh, the age limit, I'm sure, but that would diversify the committee. You have young people and you can I can balance it out on the other side. But I've been around a while and I know I know a lot of people in the state and particularly in this uh, central Vermont and um, would love to help. So I'll answer any questions anybody wants. Well, thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. <clears throat> Should we go back to live? There's somebody, there's somebody in this. Oh, thank you. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, that Should makes sense. Back? Yeah, Pam, that makes sense. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Pavin Khan. I'm Turkish American, moved um, to Montpelier six years ago. I live in Montpelier, but now I'm in Florida. I was supposed to be returning, but um, our flight was canceled. So mm -hmm. we will have one more night here, and hopefully tomorrow night I will be <laughs> at home. Um, I am very happy being here. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this team. I don't know that much about media. When I was in Turkey, I was on a um, couple of uh, TV shows because of my job, um, but that's all. So I'm uh, excited to learn um, from you and contribute and help our mission and uh, help our community. And as uh, some of you mentioned representation is very important. That's why um, last election I ran for the city council and I am the uh, city councillor um, and I rep represent a district to Montpelier uh, residents. Uh, my day job is leadership um, education. I work at Norwich University. I'm the director of leadership center and also chair of the leadership program. And uh, leadership is my passion. And I'm very happy that uh, after moving here, I was able to find some uh, job so I can continue follow my passion. And I just uh, signed my first book contract. Uh, and next year, November 2024, um, my first book uh, will come out. It's about leadership uh, lessons from um Pirates of Caribbean series. So we are two authors. I'm the main author, and it will be so fun. So maybe that's the that's the connection, me and Orca Media, through Pirates of Caribbean. So thank you again. I'm very happy being here with thank you. you. And CJ is just gone from being remote to in person. So wow. you're right. Ooh, <laughs> both virtual and yeah. real. That's right. <laughs> Uh, so hi, everybody. CJ Stump. I'm Orca's relatively new treasurer. Uh, Pat, nice to see you. I think you and I think I saw you in the legislature when we were working on the uh, with Paul Haskell and Vermont Futures. Oh, yes. Yep. Right. When we I were passing on the legislation yep. for rural broadband. Uh, That's right. So I'm, yeah. <laughs> so nice to see you. It was fun working with you. Um, and uh, I'm from a rural part, up from East Randolph, which is very rural, lots of cows and people. Um, we're from the conservative gun owning part of the state. And uh, so 
I think it's sort of as, as and so I'm sort of constantly harping because whether or not I feel that way, my neighbors do. So I'm the one that keeps saying, hey, what about the conservative voices? We need to make them feel welcome. Um, my background is mathematics at Smith, engineering at Dartmouth and at Stanford. I'm on a couple of boards, including EC Fibers board and um, where I'm sort of the financial business spreadsheet person and therefore considered a real PIA. But the project's really critical to Vermont, and <laughs> they're like, just skip that fact that it's not a, a good for the state, you know, more money. And I'm like, but, but. So, um, anyways, I love the Orca project. I'm really optimistic about what it means for lots of different constituents in Vermont, from the youth to the small businesses, where we can bring access to resources that a small business normally can't afford. Um, and make the state more attractive. I was just reading the VPR 2022 survey of viewpoints in Vermont to get ready for tonight's meeting because um, I thought it would be helpful to say, hey, here's what VPR found in surveying viewpoints around the state on everything from is it a good place for young people to grow up and start a career mm -hmm. to how satisfied are you with your broadband hint less so than, you know, than a few years ago, even though more people have high speed internet. So. Um, and Pat, remind me, which committees were you on? Um, I was on House GovOps. I was on education for a while, but then House GovOps, which is yeah. which was made sense since I work for state government. So that's yeah. where I was. Very cool. And Palin, very cool. Congratulations on your book contract. That's very neat. So thank you. And I will do like teenagers do. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Hard. <laughs> Hey, I was going to say, how about um, I could give my elevator pitch for like what Orca Media is, too, because I think that oftentimes it is a little bit cumbersome and to even like, grab your head around since it's as a, you know, community media, public access TV has a long history and it's odd in the nonprofit world. So this is what I usually tell people when they're like, what the heck is Orca Media, right? And so it, Orca Media is one of 24 uh, community media centers in Vermont, also known as uh, PEG uh, TV, which is Public Education and Government Access TV organizations. Um, all of these organizations are funded almost entirely by cable subscribers. So this goes back to like the 70s when uh, basically people out in America were like, hey, uh, cable companies are laying cable lines across public lands and past our houses. We should have access to cable TV. And the Supreme Court at the time was like, that's a good idea. And they that's where, that's the, the very like truncated version. So anyway, so that's where public access TV emerges. And so if you have, in, in our case, in our area, we're funded by Comcast subscribers. So if you live in our area in the 13 towns, you'd see a little line on your bill that says public access TV, and that would be funding our annual budget, right? So um, after that, really, the, it's kind of like open-ended what they do, right? So like some of them work directly with uh, municipalities and select boards. Oftentimes, uh, there's some agreement between the town and, and school boards to cover regularly cover meetings. Um, uh, in most cases, they have at the same time uh, uh, services and resources that are available to the public. In our case, we have this lovely studio that is free to use uh, to individuals and nonprofits and for non-commercial uses, more or less. Um, and you know, all of these organizations that kind of operate uniquely, but similarly, um, we also have cameras available for the public. We uh, have a service where anybody in the community can request coverage for an event. So if they're having a public meeting for their board, just like ours, and they really want a camera there and they want to broadcast it, they can call us. Or if they're having a concert or a protest or something, they can fill out a form online or call us and we can show up with the camera. We, um, yeah, so that's... I'm just saying, I think, oh, we also operate, I guess, and manage three channels on on Comcast. So that's that's the the uh, that's the heart of the organization is television. Still, uh, is that we operate a public and education and government access three different channels on Com on Comcast that you would only see if you were within the 13 towns. So that's the kind of exciting thing. So then we're also part of a network called Vermont Access Network, 
which is more of a advocacy nonprofit that kind of advocates for all 24 organizations at the state level and is also kind of interested in like uniting us, you know, and and, and all that fun stuff. Am I missing anything? Training worldwide. Oh, yeah. So we also offer like, you know, so on top of it, we've all kind of mes yeah. mentioned the exciting part of like education and, mm -hmm. and young people coming in, which has been happening a lot more in the last couple of years. Um, you know, so we work with schools, uh, we, we do partnerships uh, in, in training opportunities. Michael's brought his students in here before. Carlos has brought his students in here before. We run our own summer programs. And then we also just, if somebody called and said, hey, I, I have an idea for just kind of like a, you know, some, not necessarily a regular show, but just one thing, I need to borrow a camera. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think we talked about that over the phone, right? So it's like, I just need to borrow a camera and just learn how to do this with something really simple. We would help you out. You know, we offer a couple hours a week to train people and edit uh, edit software or using basic TV cameras. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's always exciting. I think the cool part about that, about that part, uh, giving people access to computers and the software which is not free right if you were to operate you know you would have to pay a monthly fee you can take people to just come here and edit here and if they don't understand how to do something particular instead of browsing through the internet they could ask the people around right there's always people here to help you which is yeah. super fun um we have uh three full-timers and, and 10 to 12 part-timers and a, a handful of part-timers are usually here editing and so there's plenty of people to help out people even when it's like their first time here so yeah that's always exciting mm -hmm. lots of stuff happening and we get um four quarterly checks from comcast that keep us afloat and we know that cable revenue is um i would say drying up but people are certainly cutting the cord and um, moving to you know all the streaming services out there and um so we're always always thinking about um, the, the eventuality that we're going to uh, need to create funding streams. And, and part of that has been working with the legislature and we, Van has shepherded that through and, and uh, been successful in sort of beginning um, thinking about, you know, life beyond uh, being attached to the, the cable bill. Um, My favorite topic, streaming revenues. Yay. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and also just the, the 13 channels, but also we're on the web and live streaming graduations and um, <laughs> catch it, you know, if there's a select board meeting you miss, you can go back and say, oh, that issue, that topic, whatever yeah. it was, ARPA funding or something. Mm -hmm. um, we're on TikTok now too. Uh -huh. so the TikTok. We're, we're like dipping our toe into, you know, I'm still a camera. I'm like, anyway. <laughs> And so why the the opportunity for Vermont small businesses, which you know, you know, Vermont is not a state known for tons of young people, it's a state known for tons of older people. There's a lot of innovation, particularly in the rural areas, but very little technology expertise. So access to it. And this is why, as I'm looking at the Oregon Media Mission 2023, which I love, I would just add in addition to um local communities and government, I would add. I would specifically add business or small businesses because without them, young people don't stay. And yeah. Vermont, you know, the PBS uh, or BPR rather surveys showed that in general, Vermont is not considered a big place to grow up and start a career, and that needs to change. Yeah, and so I, I guess we could also mention that we're in the kind of uh, entering somewhat middle of a strategic planning project, which we're working with the consultant, Nathan Suter in Montpelier. I don't know if anyone is aware of him, but, uh, and he's been really great. And so a lot of things are kind of like still in flux as far as, you know, a new mission statement, kind of like, what does our five to 10 year plan look like? What are some of the things that we articulate as our goals and objectives over the next couple of years? Um, so all of that fun stuff is coming. Um, and it's also new to working media. As far as we know, Orca Media has never really, you know, had a reflexive moment where there were like where we as an organization have done a strategic planning project. Um, I think there was yeah, there a was start. Oh, start. Okay. Maybe twenty twelve or so. Okay. 
I won't remember the gentleman's name who came in, but um, there was, there was a, a, a beginning of, and um, silence. Under Rob, right? Yeah. Well, I think there's space right now, talking about this moment in the future. I think this is a good moment to be part of the board because there's a lot of work going in that direction, direction in terms of the future, what is what is what is the future in five and ten years going to look from now? And I think a lot of things are going to be changing in these next few years. That's what it comes to revenue sources, kind of all those things. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, by covering that governor's press conferences through COVID, um, I think we uh, a lot more people heard our name and um, our true. awareness of us increased and um and it's it's something something to grow from um we also um in i spoke a little earlier moving to the sociocratic model which is less hierarchical less of a sort of a ceo model uh we have a co-directors model and that actually requires um i think board engagement to kick up a notch or two so um, we used to meet monthly and uh, that was ages ago. We now meet every other month. Um, if you're interested in uh, being on the board, some very basic things are your availability at 6.30 on the fourth Tuesday of um, every other month right now. So it'd be the June to the August to the, you can count, count it out. <clears throat> Ability to RSVP, that you'll make it so we know we have a quorum. Um, we, I think we've only once shown up without a quorum and had people leave and that's no fun and it's only happened once, but just, mm -hmm. just being able to be responsive on email and or text, you, you get an email uh, reminder um, well before with the board packet with a request to RSVP. And then I text the day or two before, so just, like just the basic functionality of, of what's hopefully required. Um, and then again, we've got, help me remember the, the three policies, policy circle, tech? Facilities. Right? Facilities. And outreach. Okay, so we've, we've already done some work kind of building those. And again, on our social, you would maybe the language of committees may be more comfortable, but um, under under a sociocratic model, I use the language of circles, which is um, there's a sense of overlap where board and staff are on these together. So that's um, and then you know decisions get shaped and then brought to the a meeting like this one. But we hope to get more functional in the off months. So um, I don't know what kind of a time commitment is it. Yeah, I think we said as a board member through the the circles, the circle work, right? So uh, this is kind of a new thing that's come out of uh, transitioning from having one executive director to having three co-directors is uh, having these like areas of uh, like ad hoc uh, committees, right? But like um, since you know, so it's like Jin's world is content and. Um, and administrative stuff, more or less. It's like we kind of all overlap, but so the Jen is leading the policy circle. You know, since my world has been uh, outreach <laughs> and education stuff, it's like I'm leading the outreach circle, and uh, uh, Zach's world has been production and 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 kind of the the physical space, the equipment. So he's leading the facilities circle. So it makes sense for like what our, our we do as the three co-directors, and then it's kind of like having folks from the board to join the circles. Um, you don't need to be an expert on cameras to join the facility circle, but it's, you know, it's just kind of like adding insight from, you know, whatever background you have. Uh, that's, and it's kind of been just getting started too, I'd say, um, yeah. So like, for example, uh, with the outreach circle, I can speak to, we, um, you know, are talking about the Vermont Documentary Lab. We're talking about, the Green Mountain Film Festival, which we've recently uh, become the parent of uh, after they were in hiatus uh, uh, due to COVID and, and kind of disbanded their board and then we took them over. Um, 
you know, we're talking about connecting with schools, school residencies, school partnerships, policy circle. What are you looking at? HR. Um, we are looking at revamping our employee handbooks and policies and procedures and trying to get them a little bit more um, universal and just and up to date. I don't think they've been updated since like 2013. So I think in some, you know, it's been because the organization was smaller, it was a little bit more um, just people talking. And so it's like, you know, I don't know that we spent a lot of time talking about policies and what's fair and what's, you know, what we want to present and how we want to view our employees and how. And so I think we're, that's what the policy circles looking toward doing this year, I think, um, just kind of formalizing some stuff that's just probably been talked about. And then I think, um, and Zach's not here since the facilities. So facilities, I think with DCFA selling, that's, you know, one of the things that he's been looking at is, are there other spaces we could go to? What, you know, and he's, if we are gonna stay here, do especially if we're trying to focus on community outreach and trying to make you know, can we make the studio more enticing? We started talking about a podcast studio or like converting some area to be very quiet. And so I think it's, you know, like the things that are happening in the media world and how, you know, do we have the equipment to kind of embrace that? So when Christopher talks about TikTok and like, you know, that's like, oh, okay, well, what kind of things do you need? If that's going to be something that's bigger. So hopefully, I think the circles notion came out that we, Orca's got very distinct like categories and we we're hoping to just pull in the expertise and the knowledge and the outside view of the board members into these circles. So it would be more like, like a smaller, like working team type before coming to the big, you know, this is our idea before coming to the big overall board meeting. So we're hoping to make it a little bit so we could really kind of get a lot of stuff done in the smaller team, like circles and then come to the board if there needed to be. So I think that's kind of what we were hoping for. And it is, you know, I think with the with the co-directorship, that's where we came and came up with the idea of the circle. So it is very new. Right, and I think we're just at the one year anniversary of the co-director model, aren't we? I think so. With yeah, the fiscal less, yeah. uh, year turning in July 1st. Mm -hmm. oh, that's right. And then we had a three month review and then it's been all systems go. Yeah, yeah. So, Happy anniversary. Yeah, wow. Um, and also, yeah, those, when I was speaking of off month, uh, the language of ad hoc and like it would be for a purpose. Yeah. Um, answer this question, figure out this, shape this issue um, <clears throat> that actually staff would drive, um, directors, co directors would drive. So it wouldn't be every circle meets every off month, yeah. but um, targeted. So I think also it's, you know, the idea is that it would make more efficient uh, full board meetings that are not as long, you know, so it's like those, there's a lot of benefits that are, right. that are universal to um, uh, other boards too. It's, it's, a, it's a model that other nonprofits are experimenting with too. I think Phelan said something in the chat there. Hey. Is that right? Sorry, I, I don't want to. Interrupt. I just throw that I need to leave 720. Um, oh, sure. I will be here to meet all of you and just listen. Um, because of my like <laughs> arrangements, I'm at the hotel and everything, so my family is waiting to have dinner. I said, Mom, <laughs> like, so I just want to make sure, um, to tell you beforehand. So that's all. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for making it work for you on your end. And safe travels tomorrow. And we'll try to we'll try to get some peaks of sunshine in um, for you. Yeah. But uh, you're not you're not uh, you haven't missed okay. the most weather. You promised uh, me, so I'm coming tomorrow <laughs> if I cannot find any sunshine. <laughs> I don't know where to go. It'll be summer eventually here. Actually, it's been quite. <laughs> It's been, uh, we've been, we were talking about saunas earlier. It's been a bit of a sauna lately. Yes. Um, <laughs> smoky sauna. Now we've got to sort of get ourselves back to the boring stuff and do our little agenda here. Um, so we, I think we, we just may have, public comment is traditionally after call to order. And I neglected to grab that, but I, uh, members of the public um, are welcome to speak suggest question um that's always our lead um so 
the floor is open for any member of the public to uh, share anything with uh, the board. And I don't know if any letters, anything come through in the off the time? No. no. Okay. Um, and uh, people is there, do they now that they've heard all of the different spiel things? Is I wonder. I'm curious if anyone has any questions. If that makes sense. Us. Yeah. Yeah. Any of our visitors. Yeah. So public comment can be inclusive of just yeah. what you've heard um, us all describe. Orca as being, and if any of those descriptions led to questions, um, it's kind of a, it's an open floor piece. So shaping it, shaping it to the specifics of this evening, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Or were we, did we just nail it so well that no one has any <laughs> questions and we can approve the minutes of April 25th and really get to the fun stuff. Um, so open floor. <laughs> I guess I guess we did okay. No one got scared off and no one got confused. Is mm -hmm. that true? That's That'd true. Great. All right. Um, so that'll move us to agenda item number four, and that is approval of the minutes of April 25th, 2023, which um thank you, Jen, have been provided. Um and we did so this will just give you a sense of the rhythm of a board meeting as well. We generally go quiet for a couple minutes and everyone just reads through, looks for typos, looks for incomplete thoughts, or just, um, just we all take a minute and review our last. And we also do our very best not to turn this into a discussion of the items on this. If something <clears throat> is unfinished, we say that for old business. This is purely just, do the minutes accurately reflect um, what occurred on the 25th? Just point of clarification of what we're actually doing here. Um, so um, we'll go quiet and if people note errors or needed fixes, oh, and this is actually, um, this is actually, is this Chad your first? Yeah, go around. All right. So, uh, thank you for picking up those yeah, dudes. Yeah, say that this is not an easy thing, um, especially when you have ADB. Oh my God! Yeah. Uh, on the financial yeah, report there. section C, I think we decided. Did we need a vote? And decided no vote was needed, which mm -hmm. um, might be helpful to have in since we did something. Some good news, but. <laughs> Um, we'll do it. How do when we have changes on the minutes? I I don't I don't know how to change or, or okay. what am I supposed to do when when there's supposed proposed changes? I can give you access to the drafts, the draft minutes, and then you can just maybe make changes to it. Mm -hmm. So, do you have access to the board um, Google Drive in there? Let's see. Sorry. And I'll just hand you what I've got here. Bye, everyone. See you next time. Thank you. Safe travel. Thank you. I just moved Google Drive to somewhere else in there, too. Well, maybe this is the day. Yeah, this is very clean. Not yeah, one really paper. Um, I had to move it into an outline format. It's the only way I can think. I like it. I really like the outline format. Do you want me to drop my notes on? Yeah, if I, I don't. Yeah. If I can tell what it means. No one decided. No one will read it. The thing about C. About uh, C. About the. Uh, about. Oh yeah, is this one of the we like discussed a couple times and then like came to a decision later? Yeah, it was we discussed this area here, the COVID budget overage, et cetera. And then the board decided there was no approval needed. Okay. Um, because that was a big old weird discussion. Um and at the moment I think we have a three signature financial. Uh, mm -hmm. Situation which needs to go to two, but 
Oh, that's okay right now. It's nice to have lots of signatures needed to move on. Um, the only other thing I had was our discussion to try to make sure conservative and liberal viewpoints mm -hmm. uh, were recommended as well as geographic by and how we need to keep us. Um, so this is kind of covered in here. But CJ, where are you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the uh, co-director's report in section C. My only reason for coming back and saying we include these specific parts as well is because we included in these specific parts. Oh, yeah. And so otherwise it looks less balanced to the conservative minority. <laughs> CJ, help me understand what you're doing. The first one is under financial reports. C. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what's going on there? What's your objection to what it's got It's here? not an objection. I think these are fantastic minutes. It's just to add in um, an additional thing from my own notes, which is the board discussed the recommendations on laddering, et cetera, said, do we need to make a motion? It decided no motion was needed. Okay. And then the other thing was just in our discussion about... Um, so I, I would think the lack of there being a motion would just say that, but... It's For some reason, a, you want a, a level of specificity there. Um, yeah, it was just part of the discussion. We spent quite a long time on it. So okay. if you if you are going to have minutes that include only motions, then that's what kind of minutes if you're going to have. So under COVID bu budget overage by using laddered CDs, money market account with staggered match maturation dates. So before, secondly... Uh, there would be language. Uh, uh, it would be before long term goal, and you would say board decided no board approval needed. Got it. Yeah. It's great. We'll go to the front. Oh, well done. And then I just had to. And then the other one? The other one was just on um, section five, uh, subparagraph C. And I love being able to refer to our minutes this way because it makes it so easy. So I'm just saying that you've done it this way. I don't really think it's great. Um, we, we have a general thing that says ensure all viewpoints continue to be represented. And but I but we also mentioned LGBTQ plus and BIPOC and geographic, and we had discussed also conservative and liberal. Well, there's there's demographics and then there's ideology. Right. So conservative and liberal are are two very kind of polarized terms. Yeah. I mean, anarcho-syndicalist, fascist, like the, I mean. To, to name just two ideological viewpoints that are, you know, definition gets, I think nonpartisan does it. I mean, then we could really get into the weeds if we name okay. two political points of view on a spectrum. Right. You know what I mean? But the, the reason for mentioning is if we're going to include our BIPOC and LGBTQ+. Um, which, which are demographic are, groups. Yes. Yep, I see versus ideable ideological and if you name two ideologies yep. that are I, I just and I feel like that point has been something you 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 hammered home a lot and um right it's I'm, because I'm, I'm from the rural and I'm trying to bring my awareness even though I may not vote or you know I may not but what I try to do is listen to all of my neighbors um and so right. that I try to bring that perspective. And so what I'm trying to avoid is a perception that Orca is unfriendly to, for example, the pro-gun rural community. Because well, we did general... add rural. I mean, I think we did, yeah, we did talk about that. Well, geography is yeah. already there. Yeah. I think Which... that, because this is specific to the discussion regarding diversity of candidate recruitment. Sure. So yeah. we did agree um, that, we went in the in the advertising for candidates, we didn't want to mention political affiliation because that's not something that we take into consideration when recruiting candidates. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't I don't I don't think adding that now. But Sorry I mean, to, yeah, no, and and again, part of what I'm trying to do is Orca, we want Orca to be available to everybody and to feel like we want everybody to feel like they're welcome in Orca. 
And I am simply reflecting back because I live in a rural area and right. like, that my rural neighbors don't read this as their welcome. They read this as my, you know, my gay and trans rural neighbors are welcome. But maybe by gun owning neighbors, which is a the area, you know, I mean, Vermont has both Bernie Sanders and the second highest rate of gun ownership in the country, but it's primarily rural. I mean, I think adding rural is fun. And if yeah. you have another way, of, if you could say like I, the people in where you're living without saying conservative or liberal, because I think that's not something that we, you know, when we hire people, we don't ask if they're conservative or liberal. No. When we recruit candidates, we don't ask if they're. It's, it's an uncomfortable place to be yeah. it, it because is. we're a nonpartisan organization. Right. To start naming specific ideologies that we want to show that we're courting, it gets that gets really that gets really uncomfortable in terms of our mission. I agree. I agree. What I was looking at is um, if is. It's and I feel like we're kind of rehabbing the conversation we had last time. And that's yeah. not what approval of the minutes is about. It's not. But the, uh, and, and you're right, we had that conversation and we took it out of the minutes because it seems political. Well, it was never in the minutes. No, or you're right. It didn't go into the minutes because it's political. I think the comfort with us being a nonpartisan organization that doesn't like name specific groups or viewpoints that we're trying to um for is is the danger point yeah yeah no nope, i am um i am just trying to bring a, a point of view uh you know it's not real comfortable for me my family is very very far to the left the whole thing i have i have college professors in virtually every single one of my five brothers and sisters and my mother is a college professor at a liberal university. I'm not super psyched to come in here and say, hey, I got going on and gun owning neighbors that vote for you know the Republican candidates sometimes, but I do. There's well, I think adding rule is okay. I mean, if that's you feel like that's missing, but I do I think that like maybe reiterating that you know Orca as a nonpartisan is also important in hiring or recruiting. I mean, like so that that's not even really. Yeah, I don't know. I think that yeah. maybe rural is missing. Yeah, maybe we could add the word rural after geographic because geographic is speaking to the 13 towns. And then I think rural is, is valuable. Yeah, because I mean, there's people that live in rural Berlin. There's, you know, there's there's people that live in rural Randolph, you know? Yeah, maybe it's not appropriate to put into the minutes discussion, um, as Michael said. Yeah, and you can, I mean, continue i i do know i do know the co-directors do a really good job of watching the line they've had they've had people really strongly advocating for us to get a specific journalist to do specific things and you know turn up the volume on certain viewpoints right that's not what, what we are yeah no, um so um so i sorry um you know, I think geography explains it for me. It kind of, you know, the ideology is not important for what we're seeking here, but I think it's implicit there. How about if, if you know, we added to the geor you know, geography, we added just our, our entire geography. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Everything covers everything. Yeah, in. I think that yeah. everybody <clears throat> within that, whatever ideology we have. Yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, having, having yeah. sort of demographic um breadth is yeah. is is super important and we get in trouble when we start doing the uh, treating ideology like a demographic and there you know there there are conservative gay people there are conservative Absolutely. people of color and that you know those 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 are purely demographic terms yeah um yeah. so that's i i it's such an important line to keep clean uh, for an organization like sure. yours in that case, do we want to remove our our thing and just say, you know, all of our geography, nonpartisan, ensure all viewpoints continue to be represented? I was only reacting to the conclusion of a inclusion of a couple of subgroups that well, I agree with. So I will say though that this is something that was specific to the mm -hmm. the advertising that's already gone out in the world. Yep. Right. So I mean, we could change it in the minutes from when the last meeting, but I mean, the, this is what's already been 
published on Front Porch Forum and what we agreed upon in the criteria. Um, so I, that's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, um, you know, my, all I wanted to do was, was bring it up as something we had discussed and find out what, you know, what, if anything, we wanted to do. But I'm perfectly happy to leave it out. But I did feel an obligation to bring it up. That okay. I but just the terms BIPOC and LGBT yeah. which were the triggers for you. Those those are those are like demographic groups as opposed to ideological. They may they may function in the political world, mm -hmm. but there I don't assume everyone who's BIPOC is is a liberal or in do you know what I mean? That's you know what? I, that's the concern. That's the concern. I am not the, the line between demographics and ideology is, is for what I just told yeah. you like you get that those are not um yeah. ideological terms. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean I don't think we ever that, that's just something that uh, I don't know. I mean, if when you read like I, I I what what I was doing when I wrote this was I was mimicking like what you'd see in in a job at you know you wouldn't see we want to you know we're, we're we're absolutely accepting of the democratic party membership you know like you, that's just not something mm -hmm. i think it was part of the practice of the, the dei uh a work that you're supposed to do in a job posting now is to include that sort of thing it's because uh someone may not feel uh like as welcome to apply and, and it has been shown to have more uh, of a diversity of, of applicants. Whereas, you know, yeah. I don't need to say, you know, hey, you know, if you have a gun, you can still apply for this job. Hey, if you're, you know, old white guy, you can still apply because those, those right, you weren't like born with a gun. I mean, but that's like a whole other discussion. But like, that's you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, so yeah, right. So I think I think that that I value your perspective, and I think that that's something that you could. Definitely adds like yeah. the ongoing perspective. I think that this was like, you know, I was reporting on the post, right? That was already made. So, right. Mm -hmm. But I think going forward, I think rural is valuable. I mean, like when I think of rural Vermont as an organization, I mean, I do think that they're somewhat progressive, but I also think that they represent the farming community, the agrarian community, and that is going to definitely include some conservative voices, right? Like, and so and old school, there you a go. variety of like a yeah. Venn diagram of beliefs that you know you might not associate with what you consider yeah. liberal or conservative. You know, it's your right. Like they're just the, more the like struggling, and, uh, yeah, people that are in the rural. Yeah, it's ag. There's a lot of people who work in the trades in yeah, the rural they're, communities, they're, they're, um, and they tend to be more conservative. And um, it's you know, I'm just because they're my neighbors, because I run into them at my local stores and bars, um, I'm just bringing their viewpoint over and saying they may not feel as welcome as we might want them to feel. Well, I mean, and they're right. by all means welcome to come in here, you know, and, and I love them that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but I also know that when they read the minutes and they see that, they're like, oh, that's for people who are these demographics, not for us. And so I'm just, that is why I keep saying, hey, it's not, I am relaying the viewpoints of some of my neighbors, and that's all. And, yeah, and they are not discussion everybody. for like outreach and messaging for our yeah. communication to the public. Not yeah, that we have yeah. yeah. minutes to review. Maybe we could put that in the outreach yeah. circle. As all like of my family is hardcore right wingers, not just a little bit conservative. <laughs> no oh, colleagues yeah. are better, so yeah. I do understand. <laughs> you and I need to yeah. each other and I know, what, I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. yeah. And I mean, there are big points. They would be different from ours, but they're part of the state. Yeah. Um, are there any other amendments, uh, fixes, typos yeah. that people see? Um, Number seven, section seven A, desire to form instead of going. Good right? catch. Is that, is that correct? Form process or it's your name. Oh, you're saying form <laughs> up process. Okay. Or firm, or is it firm up process? Could be I don't know. Either one works. They both say yeah. the same. Well, I think that was supposed to be form. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I mean, take more catches like that or a motion to accept the minutes with the two uh, fixes. Move to accept. Done, right. second. CJ has moved to accept the April 25 minutes uh, with two fixes. And Carlos has seconded. Yeah. And that will all the question. Um, all those in favor of approving April 25th minutes, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And that's unanimous. All right. Thank you all. We're moving on to financial reports. And that's probably somewhere between CJ and Jim. And I've got, I don't know, I got a lead with my follow up from the last meeting. Go ahead, you, sir. Okay. So, our last meeting, we discussed um, the, we had a hundred, I believe it. At the time it was 125, but it's actually 135. Yeah. We transferred 135 over. Um, that my understanding was I needed to sign two documents. Um, Stephanie emailed me a couple weeks after the meeting, say, hey, these documents are waiting for you in Randolph. And it was the first I'd heard of them. I think you may have sent, I think you yeah. may have used the bad email address. But the Orange Southwest went from three jobs ago. Yeah. So I got this thing. I was like, what? So I sent back and said, first I'm hearing of this. And then um, she went quiet for like a week. And, and then she popped up. She may have been on vacation or something. But I ended up talking to Mark. So he explained that the latter CD thing was just a matter of gin moving the money from savings to checking and community. And Edward Jones has a pre-built pipeline from checking. So we've got a three month, a six month, a nine month, and a 12 month CD. And they're all in the high, they're on the low fives. There's one in the high fours. The exact the percentage for when I get my report. Okay, great. Um, and then there's also the money month there. Mm -hmm. The second piece was guided solutions. Mm -hmm. And I, I was under the understanding we would have to move all of our money over. No, the American fund remains. And as we decide to green up and clean up our um, portfolio, moving out of American funds into guided solutions makes more sense. But we don't have to shuffle everything over. And that's the impression I was under. So our, our original fund family would remain. But as uh, Mark may identify things that are like weak performers that, um, and he said there's no reason to like do the paperwork to make it happen because it expires in 60 days. We're heading into summer. We don't actually know what we're moving yet. So he was just like, pull the trigger when you're ready to pull the trigger, but it's it's in our back pocket. So it wasn't, it wasn't an all or nothing. We're leaving American funds. That was helpful clarity for me. And that's, um, where we stand now. So and you can fill in some gaps. Okay, I'll uh, jump in then. Um, our former treasurer, Mike Doyle, brought us into uh, Edward Jones with a prior Edward Jones uh, advisor who did a very, very good job. Um, and I think we, we, you know, so they did, they did excellent work. Um, and he was very neutral. He was very oriented towards just, you know, good, safe investments for the Orca Media Fund. With, I just wanted to acknowledge Mike Doyle and I uh, talked. Um, he sends his greetings and said he could not be here tonight, our past treasurer. But since Edward Jones moved to Standard Edge Reporting in 2009, so for 15 years now almost, the average rate of return on Orca's investments have been, have been a little bit over 6% annual rate of return. So, you know, like Mike Doyle, well done. It's left us in a really good financial position um, where the primary goal is conservative investments to provide a cushion in the case of a sudden interruption, which is we, Mike Doyle and I spoke today and we think that's very unlikely in that there's not, it's becoming apparent that there's not a sudden transition to streaming revenue, but rather a gradual transition that is slower than anticipated. 
and the timing of Van's very good uh, advocacy to begin to bring in uh, a revenue stream from the streaming. And I'm really looking forward to the update from that policy circle. Uh, looks as if we're not going to necessarily need to jump on the uh, three quarters of operating revenue that we've been trying to accumulate in the Edward Jones accounts. Um, that said, uh, on April 15th, Tax Bay, I and Mike Doyle had an extensive meeting with uh, Edward Jones with Mark Gwynn and uh, came out of that with a recommendation to the board, as Mike Abadi just mentioned, of doing laddered CDs. And then there was some misunderstanding about the need for signatures. Um, he never, they never communicated that to me. So I yeah, it ended that. up they didn't need the signatures anyway. So it was a really, it was a anyways. We're on the other side. They need the signatures anyways. And having talked with Mark today, I think that we're having some communications issues there because I'm sitting there in Albany, New York, in, in the state capitol, trying to get Edward Jones' office there to let me sign those documents because this is today. No, this was I was out of state okay. for a month, uh, over a month. So um, I'm. Mark, Mark was supposed to call me back and we'll talk tomorrow to try to make sure that those gaps in the communication got it. They did not happen with Mike Doyle and the previous person. So we'll we'll just get that sorted out. Okay. Um, because the transfer to the ladder stuff didn't happen in the deep call phone. And with interest rates of 5.3%, um, and Jim, that was very helpful. Uh, so Jen and I were messaging today, and Jen, the interest rate that we were getting on the 135k was 0.05%, and Jen just nailed it. She was like, she just came right back. And I just want to say, it's I like working with you. We seem to get along really well, and your your command of what's there and things like that. You know, Jen's doing a really good job uh, from your side in <laughs> managing the business side of work, and it, it's a pleasure to work with you. In any case. Uh, that means, so just for an example, the additional return on investment of that 135K with the laddered CD that we just moved into is uh, is over $6,500 annual. Now, we went into three month CDs uh, and I just pulled the interest rates on bonds for uh, the next six months, year, two years, and then going to five years. Um, and the reason this is important is when I talked with Finn, you had met with your co-directors to find out what you might want to do with a one-time windfall. And that included things like, you know, the need for new lights, uh, controllable lights for the studio for like three grand it was. Um, this money, you know, once we've hit our three quarters of operating revenue, this money can suddenly take unbudgeted expenses and help out. Uh, so... Anyway, so that's um, on, the, on the positive side. Now that it's invested, it went in at, at uh, into, into four ladder CDs plus a money market account. Um, and the money market is a 5%, 5.01 today, seven day yields 5%. The effective rates of the four CDs, one of them went in with an upfront discount, which we don't need to worry about. The others were full value and then a, a flat interest rate. but. Uh, they are on average all at 5.3%. Uh, so of that 135K, our average rate is about 5.2% rate of return. And um, you know, and that's gonna vary a little bit the money market varies daily, but 6,750 or about $6,500 is the added return now that that money is working in a very, very self vehicle. The uh, recommendation for Mark Gwynn is to, as those mature, is we are in a financial marketplace or a, a, an interest rate marketplace where interest rates have already obviously been increasing really rapidly. Um, that is expected to start to plateau later this year. They're expecting maybe one or two more bumps and then it should plateau and possibly descend. Now, personally, not so sure about that, but it may be a good time to, instead of being in CDs, we suggested considering bonds because uh, if the interest rates do decrease, purchasing bonds near an interest rate peak means that the prints of the value of the bonds, in addition to producing that interest rate yield, as interest rates decrease, bonds purchased when interest rates are high 
increase in value. Does that be, you know, because as interest rates decrease, the bonds that are yielding higher interest rates become more valuable. They begin to trade at a premium to their purchase price. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So um, if the board has no opposition to that, uh, we'll look at uh, making an order to shift money coming at either, you know, to, to look at shifting some of the assets into bonds. Before I move on, any anybody want to say yay, nay, you're crazy? That's a good idea. Well, it's, it's this is all based on interest rate changes. It's this is all future conversation. It's not very future, in part because the first CD will mature in a couple of months, and uh, the second reason it's not necessarily is the money that's currently all in American funds group can also be shifted if we can find bond funds in the American funds group family. We would have much more freedom to operate if we were in the guidance, uh, but we still can operate inside. So it's not as clean as as that. I mean, uh, you know, Mike Doyle was was working with the, the prior EJ person to try to manage the uh, the, the money. And because um, I knew, I'm you know, sort of trying to stay much more in lockstep than Mike did because we're just learning to work together. But these are the things that I'm personally looking at to try to be uh, fiscally responsible and, you know, I also educate the board. Yeah, well, I would. With the first ladder, the three month are coming due, I would think the first thing would be to ask the co-directors, do we have a, a need? Like, I know you guys have a wish list. So if interest rates, you know, collapse, um, there's, you know, there's that, there's the actual, right. Um, so so the I, I would not want to make decisions about each of the ladders coming due as they come due with all the variables. Well, the, the right. reason I talked to Mike Doyle today is because he's been physical me. He was he was part of the founding team for Orca. Right. Then mm -hmm. part of the reason I work with Mike so closely is I came in what like eight or you no know, eight years, I don't know how many years ago. I'm one of the older board members, but Mike has done with Orca since the very beginning, since it was created. He's got the history. And so today I said, based on what you've seen, Mike. Um, you know, when I got here, there was a concern about a sudden collapse in cable revenues as people shifted over to streaming in kind of the court. And we now have pretty solid evidence that that sudden transition into streaming is not actually happening. It's a more transition. And rather than a sudden drop in cable revenues with a concurrent increase in streaming revenues, it's more like streaming revenues are increasing and cable revenues are increasing very slowly. Would you all concur with that? Yeah, I mean, uh, our checks are gradually going down. So, I mean, we're still seeing, we're seeing a steady decrease. I don't know what exactly. we maybe thought it would be five or 10 years ago, but, you know, yeah, I mean, there's- Yeah, I think we definitely, yeah. I mean, it seemed like it was kind of plateauing. So there was maybe a little bit of hope that maybe it wasn't so bad, but I think, in the no, last two checks, down. it's definitely we're seeing it, and I think with our budget, as even when we're putting together the budget <laughs> for this year, it was one of the things that we, you know, we couldn't budget as much in there, and we definitely had to try to figure out how can we get um, more money, or like trying to figure out how we can do the budget, and we were cutting down on stuff so that right. the amount that we were getting from Comcast because it was less. And it's still like, even with that budgeted amount, we're still like, the check is still coming in a couple thousand, like, right. under. So it definitely, I mean, it's definitely not anything drastic, I think. I don't know what, when the first step of cutting the cord and every, you know, if it was presented as a little bit more drastic, but it definitely yep. it, is. It's there. happening. Yes. We all know that, <laughs> that it's going to happen, that people will be doing cheaper. My point is, when I became, when I first got involved and John, and Rob brought me in, um, and uh, John was another one of the founding members, John Block. 
there was a real concern that we were going to see a drastic reduction. And so to, to go back to what you were explaining about how Orca works, 5% of cable entertainment revenues. It's not all cable company revenues. It is the cable like HBO Max package revenues. That specific revenue pool going to cable companies is the one that is, if you will, taxed. And 5% of that goes to the peg, you know, us Orca Media type peg groups. That revenue, so although cable company revenues continue to go up with more and more internet income, the portion of cable company revenues going to the entertainment packages is decreasing as people cut the cord. The cable companies have stemmed that largely, put their finger on the dike by tying together two or three different packages. And so people, they make it just about as expensive to get internet only as it, as it is to get internet plus your, your, your entertainment package. However, we're seeing this increase in streaming revenues with a slow decline in the package revenues as people go to other, mainly as people go to other forms of internet access and say, well, screw your cable companies, keep your internet on your, your package deal. I'm going to you know, PC fiber or, or whatever. So the underlying technology shift that's happening is more of a shift to other forms of high-speed internet, whether it's wireless, whether it's pure fiber, as opposed to cable, which is a different technology. And then meanwhile, Van's initiative at last to get the streaming revenues is going to, if successful, um, fix the, the decreasing cable revenues. But the main thing as your treasurer is to look at what window of investments can I work with Edward Jones to make to optimize the return on investment. Like what is a fairly sizable chunk of money? Our three quarters of operating revenue are over $300,000. And that can return a good amount of whatever interest rates of return. So my job is to keep the money safe, appropriate to the mission of the company, but optimize the rate of return within those parameters, right? So like right now, we changed the way that the cash is invested, and now we're looking at a guaranteed additional six thousand five hundred dollars over the point zero zero five because now we're at five point three. The very conservative three month maturations was based on the most disastrous scenario possible, which is you all need three hundred thousand dollars tomorrow or quarterly, but. That is not reflecting the reality we're living in. The reality we're living in is that the cable revenues are declining slowly. So since the projection is that these 5.3% interest rates on CDs are not expected to last, and we're already seeing the market anticipated decline by making five-year CDs, which normally would be worth more, actually yield less. The, uh, I wanted to bring to the board the fact that we're not seeing a sudden need for three quarters worth of revenue. We're seeing a sudden need for possibly a 10% uh, you know, makeup. And the other thing to consider is that the, the three quarters worth of revenue in the funds accounts is liquid. It can be liquidated at no cost to us. So you don't necessarily need the money in the CDs when you can immediately get the money in the funds. And the only thing that you keep or give up is if you liquidate your funds at a down point in the market, then you know essentially you're, you're giving up potential upside. Uh, so far, you guys have been doing a good job of projecting and managing, and I'm not expecting that to suddenly change, I'm happy to say. so. Uh, that's the reason for my saying to the board after having now been in this job for long enough to start feel like I'm starting to get a sense from Mike Doyle, um, starting to get a sense of this kind of what's the market looking like in the context of our need for money management in a fairly conservative way, but in a way that might be able to finance some of the projects on your pet projects list. That um, we can look a little bit longer term because. Cable revenues are not falling off a cliff. So 
So I'm sorry. Sorry for the overly detailed analysis of things like, but my background was business development and bringing business cases to the heads of the company. And so we needed to just try to explain this here's the risk, here's the rewards, here's the term. Um, and then, uh, you know, don't want to surprise anybody, I'm pretty new to the, to the job. But my recommendation after looking at that is that it's safe to either look at some slightly longer term CDs to take advantage of the fact that right now you've got <coughs> usually high CD rates that look like they're going to decline a little bit. And you know, we're going to give out $1,000 a year or $2,000 a year on the 135000 if you you don't do this. But that's three quarters of Dax lighting package, you know, so it's the money is makes a difference. And the other uh, thing is, you know, at some point we'll have the strategy thing and then like, are we going to do an internship? Are we going to do some uh, sponsorship in particular to the program? We're going to try to help small businesses be able to get videos made, you know, like of their tiny businesses that a small business can't afford to do. Those are all things in our admission statement. So at that point, you want that money available. But so that's the other thing that affects the liquidity, the ease of the forecast. So there it is. Oh, and then remind me, did the government write a check to the pegs or, or maybe it's a question for you? Uh, it was a $100,000 check or something like that that got cut or a $25,000 check so that got kind of distributed to the pegs. There's been an annual, um, what's the term? Uh, appropriation. Thank you, appropriation. And the a million dollars was approved yep. for all 24 organizations this year. So there's no uh, no guarantees. Well, no, it's coming. It's just that we're not sure when. It yeah. could be six months to a year. It's been a bit of a delay. Is that right. weird so, and I think that last year we had that same, the bridge funding. Yep. So you'll see it in the report under government appropriations. So mm -hmm. the, I think that was the first. The line. Yeah. yeah. So that they cut it and it was, you know, they were talking about it for last budget year. So then we saw like about a year. So we're expecting the budget that just got through this year that probably we won't see the check hit till next budget year. Right. And so chances are you'll see this in our um, 2024 budget, the government appropriations of 25,000 mm -hmm. that yes. would reflect that bridge funding. Right. right. But, an delay this time. but the reason it's being done is two things, if I recall, but I want to check my understanding because it affects the financial decision making. My understanding is two, two good things happen. One is, uh, Orca Media and other pegs showed their value in the COVID environment in spades, right? I mean, people were like, wow, this really helped keep the communities connected at a time when COVID was being that was important, especially actually important. And the second is that the government has recognized that the cable revenue shortfalls are beginning to become yeah. important. So they appropriated money, they put money in the government budget to support the pegs. And so our shortfall is already being addressed and then if van is successful in getting the streaming revenues in uh we may find that we're in a better situation even than than currently and have to just think of more better things to do to help the community with that money um but what is clear is what we have in hand is a government appropriation of twenty five thousand dollars and another one yeah and i mean i think that what we've also heard is that this is this is not a long term thing, and that you know this is the third year now that they've done this at the state level. So, I mean, at this point, we're introducing the um, the community media uh, bill is in here. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't know if we're going to be asking for an appropriation again next year because the work is going to be. Now focused on the the full attachment. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we would mention that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So CJ, you 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 um 
you were on the board when Mike Doyle would do his treasurer's report. Yep. Yeah. So he would lead with like when the last check came in, how much it was for, what's in our savings, what's in our checking, just very kind of nuts and bolts yep. on the money pieces. Sure. Um, and then the global stuff gets, I, unless there's like a specific like ask or I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm, if, you're, I'm, if you're content to let me make the same changes that Mike was making, then that's fine. I'm providing additional information because I'm new and because I haven't been there since the beginning. So, and this is a diverse board with a lot of different good viewpoints. But in short, the current situation is that we have uh, $299,338 uh, $9, as of June 1st, yesterday's value with the additional $135. Um, uh, was just over 300, so it's increased, uh, you know, some hundreds of dollars since June 1st. Um, March 1st, 2022, we were at $313,500, so we have seen uh, a negative effect of the uh, dilution of currency, et cetera, due to the pandemic. It did not grow from March, and so for March 1st to March 1st, it went from 130, uh, 313 to 294, 600. Um, it's now starting to grow again, and the CDs will obviously help stabilize for the moment. Uh, we go into some additional bonds again, um, pretty safe and conservative. It does I tend to agree with Mark? It does look like a good time, but bonds are complex, and I don't profess yeah. to be an expert. And they also lock you longer, or the, the penalties for getting out are a little harder hitting, and. Um, I will connect with uh, with the details of his recommendations and how they're structured because it, they're not all structured the same. I have some experience with uni bonds just because of being on EC Fiber's board and on the executive committee um, through that. And um, so I could talk a lot about those, but you know, corporate bonds uh, seem to be structured in different ways depending on the corporation. And then I'm the Vermont Bond Bank is its own thing. I did work a lot with Paul Giuliani, the, you know, who did almost all of, of the state's bond issuances, but mostly on legislation. But I think Mark is willing to come to our next board meeting. So that would be good to touch base. He met with us maybe two years ago. He's our financial advisor. Uh, he came in my first meeting, Mike, Mike and I. <laughs> meeting after I took over as treasurer, I think it was the second one. So it was much more recent than that. Well, there was a there was a time when he was talking about greening up the fund, cleaning up the fund, having your values be reflected in your investments. I think he was more asking what our boards. I think we're talking about two different visits. I think I remember that visit about changing the making more green, I think. But, I, but you know, just to kind of jump in here, I, I feel I feel like these these discussions should be this is like a more of a smaller committee mm -hmm. because right now I mean I'm following the market in a different way but I'm lost here you know I just want to put it out there yeah because I haven't done the research in terms of you know that requires a lot but I think that should happen in a different committee I think this space right now should be more reserved for kind of the clip notes of this okay and I think that's good guidance, and I think yours matches Mike's, which is please just give us how much we have no, on the bank. No, but I love, and I love, I love what you're, I mean, I love what you're, what you're coming with. I feel like you two sitting down and talking about this are going to get so much more out of it than us right now. I think for us, I would like to see the numbers, the bigger picture, what it means, like yeah. when there's big transitions and changes. Oh, yeah, sure. So, because I want to, I want to focus a lot on our, our work. Numbers are important. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's good to sort of get predictive about the market, but yeah. also we don't want to be reactive to every, oh, geez, it dropped 0.2% and let's move here and let's move there. So it's just, that becomes like a philosophical oh, discussion. And like uh, and um, so the, I, I think, um, and it's also like past eight. So there's just, you know, previous time is. All right. is uh, well, going forward, I'll just bring in how much is in the account today and uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, but do I have the board's uh, confidence to go ahead and continue with the question that Mike started? That Mike well started, or what would you like me to do? 
I think if you if you break up the ladder and move it into bonds, we would like to be able to move on that um, for sure, right? Uh -huh. Like change it, just keep us posted on on. It sounds like you're you're giving us a forward idea of which way um, you may want to move us. Is that yeah. fair to say? That is correct. Yeah. Like, yeah. So thank you for that, and just keep us posted if it gets like, oh, look at interest rates; they are actually falling off off it. So they're like, oh, they're holding steady, and the ladder thing makes sense. But we just built the ladder, so I need to dismantle it. It's, in response to interest rates, just doing a little of this or a little of that. Um, I will continue to keep, you, you tend to get more information on the board because I text you. Uh, so I'll just continue to keep you updated and I'll continue to update the board much more briefly at our meetings. And uh, so, but it sounds like I've got your vote of confidence to just go ahead and continue. Yeah, which means like, Watch the money grow hopefully, but um well it's a little more active than that. Um you know. The additional six thousand came from some active intervention that we that we have coming this year. Right. So it's it's I could just watch the money grow, in which case we would be we would have less money, but that's fine. Uh, or I could do my best to stay conservative and active in our management, in which case uh, you know. Slightly more risk, likelihood of more reward. It's kind of the way it goes. Okay, well that is um, that's my report. We are down twenty thousand from a year ago. We have some new things that will make it work better, and the market is recovering. So we're expecting that that loss of money over the last year is probably going to reverse as well. But as results are not a character of future performance. Thank you very much. And Jen, over to you with the. So, um, nothing to really kind of note through the financial reports. Unless anyone had questions, I'm more than happy to um, hopefully give you details of what happened when. Um, but other than that, I think we're under on most things. I think some of them. Um, is over just because we got the bill even though it was it's once a year so even though we split out the amounts monthly the bill hit so it looks like we're over but for the most part for the year to date we're doing okay and i think um outside of that if there's any questions for, I mean, for, for me it's just uh that beginning the serve right the, the elephant. Have you been monitoring the elephant in the room? We talked very nice. We we <laughs> talked very nicely to Harriet. And okay. Harriet has shown that she will not go down. So <laughs> Harriet is our server that um pushes out the content to the cable channels. And so she we like to make sure she's happy and she has her own air conditioning. And so that um, um, um if because if she goes down, then that's where a lot of the money is going to go to. I think we're looking at like at least like ten to twenty thousand, like for hardware. So that's where. Um, and I think she's she's not quite at end of life, but it's really close. And so, um, <laughs> but she's strong and she, huh? She survived a winter storm. She had a little. There was a little snafu with the window during one winter storm, and she survived that. And she was like. <laughs> But um, so I think that's the only thing where, you know, because she's getting older and she's nearing that end of life that theoretically it could be something that we might need to purchase, but she's been, you know, she's been steady in and we don't do much to really tax her. And so I think she's been, I think she's been happy. <laughs> if there's a move to H, we can do with the time. So I think that's where it is. And I think um, the van, some of the other access centers have been in communication about Comcast. And so all our channels are in standard definition. And there's some channels that are in HD and whether when, Com I think it's been like an age old struggle with Comcast to try to get none some- None of the Comcast, sorry. Uh, none of the Comcast people are in HD yet. Yeah, so, so they yeah. haven't been wanting to give us HD. So our equipment has been, hadn't, didn't need to be updated to provide HD. But that's one of those where they're starting, Comcast is starting to say, yes, we can give you HD, an HD channel. So that would kind of move us to say, okay, well, now, since Harriet's at end of life and we need to be HD, 
this might be a time to make that transition and buy new equipment. So that's where it's like, you know, the Comcast has been saying stuff. And so how much, you know, yeah. what's really going to happen. So I think that's one of the other things that we've been keeping an eye out on. Cool. So um, now that you mentioned that if nobody or very few channels in Vermont have HD, is there like a, is there a way in which both buying, like if a bunch of or you all got together and say we're all going to buy HP servers. Is could it, can we all get a better price? Yeah, we could talk to Telview. I mean, uh, the Telview salesperson has been doing it for, I mean, he knows, I saw him in White River Junction recently and he was like, hey, how's Jin doing? And like asking specifically about Jin's server, you know, so I mean, like he's very familiar with everybody's situation, so I'm sure that that's like you could approach it and be like, hey, what if at least a handful of us needed this? Yeah, that's a good idea. The uh, right. statewide channel is HD, right? Yeah, the yeah. statewide channel is HD. So yeah, the, none of the, the none yeah. of the locals. But where's that's because they're coming. Where are they coming out of? It? How, yeah, I guess I don't actually know why. How are they HD? I think it was, I mean, I remember Rob talking and it was a big like battle just to get the HD for the statewide channel. Okay, so, so it's, yeah, it's yeah. I and think we had to give up our loan low numbers yeah. on the dial to get that. So I think um in terms of somewhere off in the Comcast land is where you know we may shoot it to them, but then they just downgrade it. And so it's not necessarily us. There's always some Somewhere. drama with them. And like, and when it wasn't that, it was like the channel marketers, or, you know, like when you put the channel on, on the channel guide, it wouldn't say what you were watching, you know? Um, it would just say like local access TV. It wouldn't even say for the media, let alone say Montpelier City Council or something, you know? So that was a huge thing for, yeah. So they you know for them, you know, I worry well they does not CJ. Is the audit lines uh the ones doing here as well? So it is under consultants. So okay. if you look, and that's why I was looking down at our net income and we're at the negative. And I'm like, wait a minute, I can do the and I was like, oh yeah, we added the ten thousand consultant. Yeah. That's why our budget, our expenses is ten thousand over our revenue. So it is in there in that in, in the consultant line. Okay, got it. Which is what number again? It is five zero four five. Zero four five. Got it. There is yep. Got a whole in. So and thank you for including both the full year and the year to date. Twenty to yeah. I uh. I think there's supposed to be one more page. But basically, we should be on the full year. We should be looking at everything at about fifty percent, <laughs> ideally. Yeah, we're coming right in 50.57 halfway through the year. Yeah. A good job, team. Um, more questions for financial reports or a motion to accept? Uh, my only question this is these are two trivial ones, but um, unemployment taxes are at 75% uh, on the fiscal year. Um, should we expect an overage? Like, that's a um, uh, line uh, 5016. 50, 50, yeah, exactly. So I believe that we shouldn't, because I was like, is it, I think the unemployment, does it kind of taper down as like you hit the, a certain amount and then the amount that we pull out. So it does, I think it was unemployment where uh -huh. it's it, like it front loads until you, everybody who makes a certain amount gets like pulled out and then it's, they, Sure, they yeah. do less. Yep. So I think, um, and like that's where. So what like social security does that we should be nearly done, and it should be kind of. But it, you know, every time we get a new camera operator, then it starts over because it's new wages that they would right. be using and taxing, so, or using in their calculations. So I think um, if all our camera operators stay with us, then we should be good till the end of the year. Um, but if you know if we get busier and I think our camera operators were pretty solid. So I think we're doing okay. And I think we covered, we did get a couple new ones that, um, but I don't think that they're going to be doing so many hours that it, it'll be noticeable. Cool. And 4,800 capital gains. Uh, so yeah, the capital gains, I'm not quite sure exactly. I think it's our accountants that the accountant needs to put in and interact with 
the QuickBooks and I've been having a little communication problems with him. So I think he tends to not go into our QuickBooks as often as I would like him to. So it's definitely a work in progress, but I think that's up to him to do the journal entry, to do it, the capital gains. And that's why it's not quite reported. Sure. So that $5 is not accurate. No, I think it's like, it's an odd, there's a, it's a recurring transaction just as a whole, but then he's supposed to kind of go in there and make the adjustments. I wasn't sure if it was from the Edward Jones accounts. Thank you. Okay. More questions, motion accepts. Financial reports. Mm -hmm. How are we doing out there? I move to accept. I hear Chad moving to accept the financial reports. I second it. And Carlos to second. Okay. And all those in favor, accept the financial reports. Yeah. Uh, please indicate by saying aye. Um. And opposed. And unanimous. Bringing us to the co-director's report, item number six on our agenda. All right, Chris, we'll take the floor. I'll try to fly through this maybe for the sake of time and give you the highlights. You have the co-directors report in front of you. So uh, for our guests, we typically uh, kind of look back at the month and report on uh, some of these major categories, which you'll see here. So um, I'd say the big one from the production end was the coverage of graduations. That was a, there was a lot involved there and we even included the viewers, viewership numbers for the first time, which was a little bit, uh, which was fun. We, you know, we had the graduation for uh, Vermont Community College, Community College of Vermont. So that was a was a high, so the peak maybe of the viewership there. So uh, and then let's see, we did live streaming for U thirty two, Randolph Union, Montclair High School, and CCHB. Um, yeah, and, that, that the and two of those were happening simultaneously. So you guys did a really nice yeah. job. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I saw the Montpelier High School. Um. Oh yeah. Then you know. Bernie came to town, so we covered that. That was fun at, over at the senior center. Um, and that's on YouTube. Want to check it out? Uh, let's see. In the outreach and community partnerships section, I think the it's um, maybe two things. Is uh, so as you know, Zach's not here. Zach's attending the ACM conference in Brooklyn. Um, the big lead up to the summer is coming, so we have uh, Vermont East Documentary Lab. Um, we have, uh, we've listed the participants here. So we have seven participants, two new media fellows, a supporting college student, and some uh, visiting filmmakers. Um, we have Liza, who will be a, a visiting artist and uh, helping to, uh, as a teaching assistant, um, which is super exciting. And then the week after the Vermont Youth Documentary Lab, we have the Make TV camp coming up with with a record high of 11 participants. So that's going to be fun. That's the younger group, the 11 to 14 year olds. So it's going to oh, be crazy. Wow. Um, we also just won first place down in White River Junction in Vermont Youth Documentary mm -hmm. Lab, won first place for the history and contemporary issues category at the Freedom and Unity Young that's Filmmakers great. Contest. So that was awesome. Yeah. I got a plaque, got some money. So we're going to give it back to the kids. Um, they each get 15 bucks. So they distribute it among them. Which is cool. Awesome. Yeah, we also won last year, which is awesome too. So we have we're on a winning streak. Um, let's see. So uh, last year, I think we had six. So yeah, so that be viewed through yeah media. Yeah, it's uh if you go to the Orca Media YouTube, it's right there. There's like a Vermont a uh, documentary lab channel, and it's probably the first one on there. It's the the video is called. Did I include it there? Called poverty, Vermont. So and it's also on the Vermont Documentary Lab site. Can we add an awards section to the website? 
Yeah, I did. I did change the Vermont Youth Documentary Lab to uh, the language that says the award-winning Vermont Youth Documentary Lab. <laughs> no, but I mean, we had, little, we had a little, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, so we can add oh, like another yeah. page of, you know, sure, this yeah. awards, because I was going to say the next one, when you talk of PADS, that's... Yeah, so yeah, so I think I meant to include those together, so they're, they're separated, but so one of the tasks that... Um, Zach is is on is picking up the award for the at the ACM for the hometown media award that Pat McDonald won, who was just here as a uh, prospective candidate. So Pat won. Um, I forget what the category was, but um, it was under like the newsy community producer uh, category, which is cool. So I mean, Pat, um. Is Pat aware? No, Zach wanted to surprise her. Okay. So yeah, she's a, she's a, she's a, she's a surprise. Yeah, yeah. Not here. yeah. I was gonna say because I meant to like I was gonna tell her and then Zach was like, well, I'll be there. I'll just pick up the thing and we'll present it to her. So, um, and I think she's won in the past too, which is cool. So that's a national since the Alliance for Community Media Conference is the is the uh, U.S. wide uh, uh, annual conference for all the community media centers. You know, are invited, and she won. In one of the categories, there's something. So, in terms of all this right now, right? How many, how many productions are being done in the studio? In order to have well, access to regular them? productions. Yeah, I would say so. What you know, would we refer to them as community producers? So that would be anybody from the community that's producing content. Uh, I'd say three. Well, three community three producers, yeah. and Pat does two shows. Oh, sorry, four. I studio. forgot Lizette. And Lizette does, she has three different shows that she does. So right. even though she's one community producer, she has three different, I think, and they're like movie commentaries. So there's like one on horror, one on world cinema, and one on just things that she likes to talk about. Within. So, um, but actual community producers, it's just four. That use the studio. I think total community yeah. producers that are like interacting with us like, right on a regular basis and producing a show, I think is like eight, right? Yeah, because right? some do come and just grab the equipment, the camera. We have some that are just like we have an AmeriCorps intern that comes and just uses the equipment as they're doing their project. Yeah, or so, Gilbert does show yes, and, that uh, his, his <laughs> really, yeah, I really wanted him to win. Yeah, he put such, he did like a green screen production and his is a Spanish language show. It's cool. It's like, Cuban in Vermont and like yes. yeah yeah his show is awesome so what's his last name oh, yeah. yeah so yeah it's great and he is also a part time staff with us yeah um okay cool so uh, strategic plan as you know it's uh, on hold so we we did put our strategic plan on strategic planning project on hold because we were actually at the uh, board retreats. Point. And instead of going forward with the board retreat, we wanted to wait until we uh, recruited some new board members. And then, so if it all works out, that's something to look forward to. There'll be more pizza. Um, <laughs> the big uh, highlight for our staff and intern section, I think, is that Juna has just started. And Juna is a Stan Stanford University work study intern uh, who will be working on an independent project focusing on mental health. Um, and she's also helping with a number of things, post-production with Zach, and she'll be uh, our teaching assistant assistant in the uh, Vermont Documentary Lab and also to make TV camp. No, no, that's no. Yeah. 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 Juna is our yeah. teacher. Yeah. I did the transition. You talked while I was talking. Yeah, that's yeah. no problem. So Juno is a Stanford University student who's interning and gonna help us out. Um, yeah. So What's 10%? So that's the work study, the internships, like we've done some internships where we didn't pay anything, they just came in. Yeah. So the Stanford work study, they pay her her wage and we pay 10% for Stanford for allowing us to have her, essentially. So she came to us with an idea. And so we figured that she's working on her independent project and we will use her for the summer camp because she has and for post-production. So we might be able to save some on salary in the compensation by using her. So we figured if awesome. we do at least eight hours, and not that she's cheap labor, but that um, 
because it's 10% that, you know, if we were to do, we could save, I think during that time period, like 1200 is like, if we just used her at least for eight hours of post-production, that would be eight hours that would save, we would save from using one of the post-production camera operator people. So that's where, and we wanted to put it in there just because most internships that we've used um, didn't require us to pay for anything, but we figured with this, with the Stanford Work Study Program that the caliber of assistance might be a little bit more than what we were getting with, I think like the Department of Labor, because it was, those were I think more um, mentorship and trying to learn how to work. And so here we're like trying to brute force and trying to get as much as we can from her while she's working on her um, independent projects. So we well, thought it was, it was just to be transparent just because it was different and we are paying a little bit for her that we wanted. That yeah, but and, he is so fortunate to be here. <laughs> He's gonna get a lot from us also. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then we can air the final product. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's, it's very cool. And I um, think we're also terrific. trying to hook, use her to come up with like um show development. So I think that's one part where, as we try to do more community outreach, it's hard to like you know we don't really have like something to present to people and be like, oh, you know, we can help you with the show. So we're maybe looking to maybe do a little bit more, sy not systemic, but like systemize the <laughs> way to try to get people involved. So it doesn't seem super like haphazard, but it's like, you know, this is kind of like, like a template of, you know, doing shows. So that's another thing that we were hoping to have her kind of like test out and, and work with the templating of shows. Yep. Trying to get more and then that's a great idea. But at some point, we talked about that playbook, like a very easy to digest playbook of how to generate a show idea. Like that's something that Orca Media should make and should have. That's on our list of right? like dream money, spending money. And uh, the, the big chunk of money that we were talking about is like, like how do we just say like a campaign, like a huge campaign to like, we want more uh, people yeah. engaging with us. We yeah. want more people using us. Yeah, that would but, be one. So, but how is it like that something supportive of that, but it's more specific? Like, yeah. here's how to do it. I also it. think I also think that playbook should be, and I have examples of things that would work. Um, very easy, like very graphical. Like yeah, breaking up story ideas yeah, in yeah. terms of graphic, like you know, like character character plus this equals that. Like, very, I'm thinking about there's this. There's an architect who in the 70s did this whole theory in architecture, urban architecture, but he did it not with words, but with images. And it was very easy to digest. You must remember his work is like super easy to digest. I'm thinking oh, yeah. like something, like a playbook that's easy to follow. That'd be awesome. Yeah. You know, I would love, like, yeah, just even if it's like fits on one sheet. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, this is how you make a show at Archimedia. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is how you find your ideas, right? Yeah. That's, because that is the biggest yeah. hurdle. Yeah. This isn't for the board meetings because we're back outside of the okay. Hey, you, I, I did business process management, so I can be the secretary. If you and, and your content and you have this playbook in your head, if you want, I'll be the secretary while you guys dictate. And <laughs> for the next board meeting, if you take the lead on scheduling, I'll I'll write what you guys want. But I think that's something we should capture that at some point and then follow up, which is under. We can talk about that in the future. Yeah, the about that. And follow up. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we also talked about promo video. That's yeah, I think that's definitely in the books. Yeah, yeah. that's and overlap a little, but it's different. Promo video. Um. Yeah, so uh, I think just hitting the finances next. Um, Jin spoke to the work study. Do you want to say? And we anything else on the accounts? Um. No, I think. Thanks for talking about that. That's helpful right there. Yeah, <laughs> we we've talked to that. Yeah, I think um, outside of that, it's you know, it's the finances is just pretty much just a list out of there, and um, I think that's pretty much it. Right. Pretty cool. Yeah. So then in the the last sections, uh, statewide regional work. Um, as I mentioned, the one million dollar bridge funding is Ooh. in the approved budget, so that was super exciting. We were following the ups and downs of the budget. Uh, mm -hmm. It did. It, it went through. So, um, yeah, so then the work continues on what's called uh, H458, uh, Community Media Public Benefit Fund. And this, is, so if you have the, the digital the copy of this, you can you can click into there and, and read the uh, summary of the bill um, on our Google Drive. Um, that's the full attachment tax. That's mm -hmm. the full attachment tax, correct. 
Yes. So there's a summary available, and um, and if anyone needs us to put it out, we can do that too. It's interesting. Yeah, it's a whole new world. So um, upcoming, uh, we also included board recruitment processes underway, and then um, there's some CVs mostly for the board to take a look at here. So that's it for the code records report. And more questions? Question. Motion to accept. Um, who's the primary supervisor for Dana and for Judy? Back, because she's a post production minion. Gotcha. Sorry. Sure. Cool. Motion to accept. CJ moves to accept the code records report. I second it again. And uh, thank you. Seconds. All those in favor? Adapting the code records report. People say aye. I heard it. And opposed nay. And unanimous. Um, uh, one more old business. Uh, which policy circle is doing bylaws changes? That's the policy circle. Which one? Policy oh, circle. The policy circle. It's called the policy circle. Oh, Outreach policy and facilities. Outreach policy and facility. Oh, we right. tack in the physical okay. space. That's right. Um, you guys, um, old business is usually just a catch all, but you did itemize here. Oh, so I think this was part of what um was discussed about making sure we capture old business and that it didn't get lost that Carlos uh, yeah, wanted. Yeah, yeah. So that's where oh. I took last the notes yeah, for I mean, new business and just shifted them to the old business. And then I was realized I forgot to keep, I meant to keep the Montpelier live old business because I think that was still being reported on about Katie Trout's. So, and I was going to say part of that process of shifting the new business into old business at some point, like this old business, do we want to just say it's no longer old business? So like, can we maybe take, like at what point can I take it off the old business list out versus, um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I was like, you know, I think I'm hoping that annual meeting date we can like get a date and then I can cross it off. That's a, that's a tonight thing. Yeah. We're, we're so, committed to figuring that out tonight. Yeah. And I also think, I mean, in terms of that process, is there like a physical board somewhere? Well, we have that. It's, so it's stuck in sight instead of out of sight. You know what I mean? So it's something that sure. we yeah. should be working on. Right. Because, like, because, it follows it. Yeah. yeah. We talk about things about new business that we're going to do or something and then it disappears and you never, and I love what Chad's done because the way he's done it makes yeah, yeah. it really easy. I just popped over old business yep. and, and new business from last week. She said, Oh, there's our list of yep. six things. So, yep. out of boy, again. <laughs> but, uh, she said, Try and do it the same way if I remember what I did. <laughs> I need to check back. Yeah. But if you shift your, if you shift your news to old, yeah. then, you're, then you're good. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a good idea, though. Like, in when we have our staff meetings, this is an example, like we tend to kind of like complete the thing, you know, I mean, everyone has probably faced this in their work setting, right? But it's like, even when it's like completed or like set, so you can still go and it's still like somewhere else now. It's in like yeah. the you know, filing cabinet or like something physical or like, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, because there are some things that are just ongoing conversations. I think that's correct. Right. Yeah. If we create a completed business section and they come off old and go to complete. Yeah. It. But maybe a physical board would feel like you've accomplished something too. Yeah. You could cross it out. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's one thing. And then the other thing for me is um, status of some of these things. Like we're talking about process for amending bylaws, policies. Did we ever talk about when we're going to do this? I can't remember. Like I would, that's kind of information we would love to have, right? Or when is it going to be? Like, when are we going to do this, right? Like, kind of those things, right? Well, I sent over some very specific uh, bylaw change recommendations. Um, so these are already, I think, did I only send them to you, Mike, or did I? Did I was like, I think, I think we have them to everybody after the last okay. meeting. Yeah. And so I think with the bylaws, um, in terms of the policy, or policy circle, is that we did, because Rachel Muse was part of the policy circle, so we held off. And hopefully with one of with the new board members or one of the new ones to bring it back into the policy okay. circle so that the we do know that the bylaw amendments and those changes that you were looking at would go and be hashed out in a policy circle. But the policy circle did 
go on a little bit of a hiatus as we tried to recruit another member into it because I think it was just me and Michael. Yeah, and so, yeah, Rachel was that's a so big um, loss and so in terms of addressing the old business, we did like I did have it in there that um it would be with the policy circle that as soon as we gather up again. Yeah. <laughs> And if you want to drag me in until until then, then copacetic, I need the education. Um, and again, I like beating these poor dead horses. Uh, my nervousness is that too is that that a surprisingly small amount of money can seem to motivate surprisingly bad behavior, and we have enough money in the bank that after my experiences on two other boards. Oh, and Mike, I'll never forget your text when you sent me that article and you were like, is this what you were talking about? And I'm like, yeah, but they haven't found all the missing money yet, in my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. That was, uh, it, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, that, can we uh, take a bite at something a little less large, like the annual meeting date? Like that's something we could actually nail down tonight. We really ought to because... <laughs> our bylaws say it happens. Okay, let's say very, let's say very quickly. Well, our next board meeting for Tuesday would be August the twenty second. Um, that is the fourth Tuesday, and I'm wondering. We traditionally had the annual meeting on a Thursday. I don't know if the following third, the twenty fourth or the thirty first. Um, what do you think about doing it the 22nd, the annual meeting with the board meeting on the 22nd? Just the third. Well, it's a, it's about getting people out. I don't know if Tuesday's a great night for that. Um, and also, we were hoping to showcase the um, the summer summer programs at the annual meeting. And right. when will they be all wrapped up by? Um, Mid July. The final thing is. Uh, July twenty first. So I mean, they should be so done it'll be easily day. done by late August. I was thinking yeah, yeah. having it um after the next board meeting in case there's loose ends to tie up that we're all bringing. I think the thirty first sounds great. Thirty first right. of July. Of no, August. Of August. August. Yeah. As for annual meeting, a week and a little after our next board meeting. So co-directors will have us somewhere close and we'll be able to report out and let us know about the what's still left to be done and maybe some board members can help push us to the finish line. That makes sense? 31st? Great. No objections? No. All right. That's all business that can be crossed off. Although now we have to actually have the meeting. See, nothing's ever crossed off. Uh, but we do have the day figured out. Yeah. No objections. Great. Um, board candidates, you last since last meeting, we have we the recruitment has happened. I appreciate it. We'll just do our next step probably at the next board meeting. So we would have some freshly admitted board members for the next annual meeting. Yeah, I think, is it what what does happen next? Yeah, do you want to say that out loud or how what's the next step for interested candidates? Um I, well, I guess we would, we would want to know if after experiencing a board member, you're still interested. <laughs> we, would want to know, we would want to know that. And then, um, yeah, that's, we would be, we would be welcoming board members, right? So, uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, so maybe I could send something to the four guests that we had uh, I'll send something out tomorrow, so there's no pressure. You don't have to say anything tonight, and like, and we can and let you decide if you're interested in coming on back, and then we'll we'll pass it. I'll include you, that, Michael, and that sounds and, great. Yeah, we'll give you an invite to. Great. Um, and then board secretary is that just acknowledging Chad's and no longer interim status, or is it? Have you yeah, loved your work. <laughs> you did it too. You did it too well. Yeah. You did it too well, but you know, <laughs> second are you willing to accept this for a while? Come on, yeah. I did it for a few years. Remember the uh, no, the board no, meeting? That's why I'm cautious. <laughs> <laughs>
for a while. Two or three. Three. I, I have I, I I'm still not not interested in the permanent. Yeah. Okay. So maybe maybe I'll change my mind, but my my carpal tunnel uh, problems with yeah. ADD is yeah. yeah. very yeah. it's very challenging. Right. And our bylaws are being honest. Yeah. Our bylaws do say that we elect officers the board meeting following the annual meeting, so that would be a an October mm -hmm. uh, reshuffle if people want to move around the chessboard. If Ted, if you need a break next meeting or the other, let me know. I'll take one out. The leaf frog. Thank you. You can. You get. I would let anyone who wants to borrow my ally system. If they would. <laughs> I really like the leaf frog. Proprietary. It's not proprietary. That's <laughs> yeah, right. Open source. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we just use Chat to, to record the minutes or something? Or? Well, that's scary. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or take the scary. the live feed from the mm -hmm. And then any other old business bylaws amendment is just into the policy circle. We'll get there. If not new business, we've got a plate ahead of us here. Wait, and you guys meet every Monday, every Wednesday? Right. Or less, yeah. Um, Certainly interesting. Uh, any new business? I just have a question. You got it. On the uh, even because I haven't read the bill. Um, what is the expected yield on the H that if it goes through as written on television? Uh, you should read it. It's it's. I think it's it's definitely uh an estimate, and I believe. It's right in the highlights there. Um, um, Comes up at EC Fiber Land a lot for different reasons. Like, it was like somewhere. seven million. That it would be annually. Yeah, I don't know why I'm thinking that, but um, and it doesn't look that there is a number in the summary. Well, there's. I mean, there's a lot of nuance there. I mean, there's an unknown amount of poles in the state. No one's ever. <laughs> It's not official. So yeah, it's like count the poles. Yeah, I mean, so there's it's been better known than that, though, because of all the poll assessment applications that have gone in to cover um, by the various ready districts. Yeah, and I mean, it's just like any other new tax, it's, it's going to be a struggle. It's as soon as people realize that's what we've heard from action circles that we're working with is this, as soon as anybody realizes that there's a revenue source, there's going to be, you know, so the term, you know, there's people will swim to it, and so it's it's just yeah. It's interesting that they went after polls rather than streaming revenues. That yeah, I mean, I, I won't comment on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was an it well for one thing it was a much easier attack because you can attack the old incumbents for streaming revenue. I don't think which is where they should be going. Uh. So the parole that come and start getting tickets again. Other uh, new business? Motion to adjourn. The new business again. moves to adjourn at 8.41. It's a privileged motion.